I was uh, unneeded myself. So I just unneeded myself right now. And uh, welcome to today's uh, q &A. I am excited to host this uh, Q&A session again. We do this weekly, uh, every Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, we get into Zoom and do a Q&A session, which is meant for uh, engagement from uh, all of you. Uh, because during the week, we are getting in a lot of information, so we need time to process it, uh, share our insights, and ask questions. And uh, every week, we bring a guest here in the group, and uh, we invite them to join us during this Q&A so that we can uh, engage with them further and ask them any questions that we may not have been able to, to ask them during, uh, during the, the session in the week. So it means today we have a guest here. Uh, she's Kalle Lomato. I will introduce her briefly uh, later on after I do the, the, the debrief. So for those of you who are not able to be live uh, on Zoom, remember we are streaming this into the Shift uh, community so that at least you can watch and, uh, and listen from there. But uh, if you want to get the benefit, most benefit of it, you'd want to connect through Zoom because there you can talk, you can ask questions, you can comment and express yourself. So let me take this time to welcome uh, all of you, uh, especially those who are here on Zoom with me. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome Umukulu, welcome Tendi, and uh, of course, welcome our, our guest, uh, Kalalelo. It's a pleasure to host you here today in this call. And the way we, we normally run this is uh, we start by recapping uh, what we did during the week, what we shared during the week. And then after recapping it, uh, then we get into the Q&A. So I'll start by recapping what I did and then I will lead to uh, the part that was done by Kalelo yesterday. And then I'll give you an opportunity to also give an overview and summarize what she's shared briefly so that when we start engaging, you, you are, it's fresh in your mind, you know what we were doing uh, during the week. Yeah, welcome. I can see there's uh, Bamba Ana there, and I can see uh, Favor. Welcome, welcome, Favor, uh, to, the, to today's session. All right. Uh, Last week, we started the week off with Sunday. I started talking about uh, clutter, you know, the effect of uh, clutter on our mental health. And I briefly shared what clutter is, which is a collection, you know, of things that are either untidy or stuff that we don't need. And research has shown that uh, they create overstimulation. And when we are overstimulated, we become uh, stressed out. And eventually that stress also leads to mental clutter where there are so many thoughts and so many things going on in the mind and uh, you know the brain can't process them so we end up even getting mental clutter from physical clutter and uh, we also then talked about the effects of what does it actually do you know apart from the mental clutter and our mental health what can we uh, what, what can we see every day that shows us that we may uh, be affected by clutter uh, we talked about productivity, that it will slow down your productivity. You may tend to procrastinate a lot because you are overthinking uh, and uh, the brain can't really uh, process. Okay. Uh, I've just... Okay, you just lost me there. Uh, let me see if I can switch to another. Can, 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 can you still see me there? Faith, am I back? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you if, I, if, if I'm still back. So uh, it could affect uh, morning wedu, uh, morning cake, he just joined us and wedu. It can also affect your productivity. Most people say, you know, I, I'm suffering from procrastination. You know, procrastination is not just about not being able to, it, 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 it's a mindset issue, it, it's a mental issue. You know, where there is something holding you, sometimes you don't know what you're supposed to do. So you need to ask help. Sometimes there are so many options going on in your mind, you don't even know what action to actually take. And that is sometimes caused by clutter. 
And then secondly, we talked about creativity, that it slows down creativity because creativity requires a uh, space. So if you are a creative and all of a sudden you find that you can really uh, create with less effort anymore, check your surroundings, you know, uh, and see how they are. Maybe there is clutter. You know, check your, your, your stress level. Maybe you are stressed out. So, so those are the things that you really want to be able to look at. To look at. And, and research has also shown that uh, clutter blocks abundance. You know, most of the time we want to achieve things. We want to, uh, to we do businesses. We want to you know, acquire money, make profit in our businesses. And we struggle. So if you are at that level, look in your life and see where, where, where are you harboring clutter? Is it mental? Is it physical? You know, look, look at that. And uh, it also leads to lack of uh, sleep. You don't get a uh, good sleep if you are uh, there's so much clutter in your life, whether it's mental clutter or physical clutter. And uh, I talked about the solutions. What can you do? Uh, the first go-to is if it's physical clutter, you can't run away from physical clutter. You can see it. You walk around in your kitchen. You see so many things. The countertop is full. It's like you are selling the, the appliances. Maybe mine, uh, those who I do in the clutter things, bro, you, you see my pictures. It's like uh, my, my kitchen here in, in Maung. It's like it's a shop, you know, with everything from blenders to uh, uh, steamers. <laughs> what, what do they call this? I just don't eat bread. Toasters, you know, all sorts of appliances. Uh, cheap fryers, and I've never even fried chips in a very long time. So, so, so really, you, you can just look around and see. It's your wardrobe. You see things that you have worn, you know, many, many years ago. So, so you want to look at it and really see that. So the first thing is then you can declutter. And I shared an opportunity uh, to join me and other uh, people to go through a decluttering process. Uh, I started, uh, we are in day two now. It's 14 days. We take it one day at a time, and every day we focus on, you know, uh, a part of your house. I think I have, you have lost me there. Okay, I'm just going to see if I can switch. I think B-Mobile is... Okay, hello, am I still there? Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Faith, can you give me an update of what's happening that side? Okay, if there's anyone who is in the live stream, I know Zoom is stable. That's why I prefer Zoom. I know I'm still available on Zoom, but it is at the, the Facebook group where I think I've, I've lost the connection. So is anyone watching from both? If you are watching from both, can you update me? Okay, someone say, Okay, yes, so it means there's something that's going on. Okay, let me just uh, switch to another another provider and see if it will catch up. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm back now. All right, so I think I'm back. So I was just saying that uh, we are in day two of the decluttering process. So if you are interested in decluttering uh, your, you know, your place, you can still you can still join in. You can contact Omhul or comment uh, below uh, this video. Then we can give you the link of where you can join uh, the program. And then secondly, if it persists, maybe now it has led to depression, which is a uh, you know, at a very higher level, 
So you may need to go see a therapist. Lemurine is laughing. You know, clutter, mental clutter can actually cause uh, depression. That most of the people who are actually suffering from depression, to tell the truth, is because of that mental clutter. That is that over-processing, you know, of the mind, where the mind cannot process now because there are so many thoughts going on in their minds and they can't filter through those thoughts. They can't get things done and they feel like, uh, I can't do it anymore. It's the end of the world and the brain gives up. So, so that leads to is how mental as you know clutter ends up leading to, to depression and all of those things. So you can now seek a therapist. And then we also talked about gut health. Uh, we talked about gut health and how uh, the gut is like uh, the second brain. So how the gut is like the second brain, uh, because that is it, it processes a lot of things on its own without asking permission from the brain. One, it houses 70% of our immune system, and uh, it, uh, it, it houses uh, both the, you know, the good and the harmful bacteria, they both coexist there. But if your gut is functioning properly, you want to have a high population of the good bacteria versus uh, the, the harmful bacteria. It's only when that balance is upset and you start having a higher population of the harmful bacteria that you start getting sick. So you start, you know, getting sick, whether, whether, whether it's uh, uh, you are experiencing fatigue, you are experiencing uh, diarrhea, experiencing constipation, uh, you know, it's, it's going to come up with so many ways. Your, your, your face will break out, you will get a lot of act, uh, you know, acne and, and break out. So you want to really maintain uh, your, 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 your gut in a very good balance of the bad bacteria and the good bacteria. And it also even uh, impacts on your nervous system, on your circulatory system, and most importantly, on digestion. That is why it's, you know, uh, Hippocrates say that all diseases begin in the gut. So once the gut is upset, then our whole system kind of throws up, it gets out of balance. So that is why it's very important for you to, to be working on your, 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 your gut and making sure that you are taking care of yourself. Of, of yourself. And then we linked it with the skin that uh, we find that uh, most of the time we struggle with skin issues and we run to the, to the shops, you know, uh, we want to go and buy things and apply things and even hide those things, you know, our, our breakouts and, and two colors with makeup. But if we, if we really treat our gut very well, it will help us with the skin because it's an inside outside job. So your first go to if you are having skin issues, skin problems, acne, all those breakouts, look at your gut balance, look at your health. How are you eating? Are you exercising? Are you eating well? So start treating it there from the inside. And then once you've got it in the in the inside, then that's when you look at okay, how do I then need to keep uh, the outside well? Because the outside is actually a protection. The skin is a barrier. So you need to keep it uh, functioning so that it protects pathogens from getting inside your bloodstream. And that is when now I invited uh, Kalelo Mato, who is a beauty uh, life coach. Uh, she's very passionate about beauty, about facial skin care, to come and share with us uh, her expertise uh, and, and give us tips that we can use you know, during this lockdown to start taking care of our, our facial skin. Or if we have been doing it, to maybe cross-correct and say, okay, where have I not been doing it, uh, it right? so that now we start cross-correcting and we improve. And if you have been doing it well, very good, then you continue uh, doing what you have been doing. So this is a summary of the entire uh, week. Uh, this week, that is what we talked about. And I have here uh, in the, you know, in the house, I have uh, Kalelo who will talk more about, uh, about that if you have questions for her. So I did, I did not summarize her tips and her things because she is the expert. I don't want to, to start, you know, twisting and adulterating her words. So I'll give an opportunity to just do that brief uh, summary of what she said yesterday. And then uh, I will open the line so that we can do a Q&A. So uh, Kalelo, welcome. Welcome to, uh, to today's Q&A session and may just give us an overview of what you uh, shared with us yesterday, the key points, and then I'll open the floor for a Q&A. 
Uh, good morning, Coach. Good morning, Game Changers. Um, beautiful weather we have today. Um, uh, yesterday, I, I shared uh, some tips on um, official skincare. It is important for us to, to note that um, the skin is the largest um, organ in the body. And um, all of us, whether male or female, we, we should at some stage uh, start taking care of our skin and um, use the products that are meant uh, for, 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 for the face. You know, um, I know probably um, if you are like me, uh, you start, I started off with some, um, you know, the head to toe um, soap and dawn. But uh, as I transitioned and became more aware, I started using the um, uh, skincare, facial skincare products. I, I, I didn't become an expert overnight. You know, I kept on um, learning and, uh, you know, correcting the protocols that I was using until I, I landed to on um, what I'm currently using. And um, yeah, um, and we all have different skin types. One of the fundamental things um, before you start your skincare uh, uh, regime is to get to know your, your skin type. Why? So that we can use the right products for your skin type. We all have different uh, skin types, skin that we were born with, right? And uh, maybe as we grow up, we also start having uh, acquiring some conditions that we also have to take into consideration as we, uh, we get to establish which regime to, to use. Uh, having said that, it then means that um, uh, to take care of our skin, requires both time investment and financial investment. And um, knowing your skin type, um, there is the basic skin um, analysis that you can do um, by just um, answering a question. But um, that will just help you to get to understand visually how is my skin. You know, there are questions that you can answer like, um, you know, is your, your skin shiny all over the face or is it shiny in the T-zone? Is it dry in some areas? And um, are you seeing any lines and wrinkles on your skin? And um, are you, uh, how are your pores? Are they big? Are they small? Uh, and so forth. And then um, if you want to know more and get to see the skin you can see, that is when now you have to look for a, a skin analysis. That will help you also to, um, you know, embrace other things that maybe if you did not do the skin scan, you wouldn't know much about, about your skin. It looks deeper into, into our skin. And the earlier we start implementing and incorporating such uh, uh, changes in our skincare regime, uh, the better. And uh, I started off by saying, as a beginner, you can start off um, by just doing the basic things so that you don't get overwhelmed. You know, there's a starting point, uh, being the cleansing, the toning, the moisturizing, and the protection. So those are the basic four steps. And there are different products, um, uh, brands in the market, and uh, we have different uh, skin types. So you are accommodated. And then, um, as you, you get to acclimatize and um, get used to that routine, that is when you can go further into, into other steps uh, and uh, maybe uh, cleanse, exfoliate, mask, tone, uh, nurture your skin with uh, a serum and maybe use the oil, moisturize and then protect. And um, that's it really. And uh, when it comes to cleansers, there are different types of cleansers out there. There are different types of um, exfoliators out there. There are different types of masks there and uh, different types of toners, you know, all um, are going according to our, 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 our skin types. And um, as we age, our skin tends to become to become dry, you know, there are those things that come with aging. And as we age also, um, we start um, um, developing lines and wrinkles because um, the matrix of our skin changes. Therefore, it becomes important to uh, start incorporating 
anti-aging products. Not to say that you are not going to age, but then we age gracefully. And um, the other thing, again, that you need to take into consideration when it comes to facial skin care is, is um, how does your skin change as the weather changes? You know, those are some of the things that you, you need to be aware of and, um, you know, incorporate and be flexible in, in, in which products to use. Like I gave an uh, example uh, using myself yesterday that uh, my, my skin is oily. But then when it gets to winter, my skin tends to become dry. I cannot be able to use the, the moisturizer for, for, for oily skin. Otherwise, my skin will just crack. You know, my skin just cries for, for, for moisturization. It says I need more moisturizer. So in winter, I switch to a moisturizer for, 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 for dry skin, for both morning and evening. And I, I also incorporate um, serums for, for hydration. And, uh, you know, and also use the eye tape and curl um, serums as well. And then, um, <coughs> sorry, apart from the products, what else for skincare? It is important to take care of our water therapy. You know, um, it's recommended that we take um, at least two liters of water per day or a minimum of eight glasses. And um, adequate quality sleep, at least eight hours. And then also take care of what we eat. Sugar is one of the things that actually um, uh, affects our skin because if you take too much sugar and unhealthy sugars, it can actually result in premature aging. Exercise um, is important for, for fitness and also for our skin as well. So um, that's it really, thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kalelo, for, for giving us that overview. Uh, for the benefit of those who couldn't join in yesterday, uh, yesterday or uh, part of the week, at least you have an idea of what uh, we were talking about so you can engage and ask your questions. So I will open the lines. Uh, uh, if you have a question, uh, you can either raise your hand or type in the chat box so that I can... Uh, you can you can you can, you can you can you can start sharing so who is ready who has a question or and this is not even just for questions even if you have a comment you know uh because we have been doing this this is this what week is this now i think we are in the third week let me check and see let me check yeah this is the third week we have been doing this for for almost uh three weeks now and whenever you do something it's important to sit back and look back and and evaluate it and see what is it that I'm, am I benefiting from this? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it working? How is it affecting me? So you may just uh, give us your, you know, your, your perspective and share your experience uh, uh, during this lockdown uh, and, or ask any questions. So just feel free to, to engage. I created this weekly session so that we can all connect and, and engage in conversation rather than just typing you know, in the Facebook uh, group like we've been doing. But if you are in the Facebook, you are watching uh, uh, the live streaming on Facebook, go ahead and you can type your questions there. I will be following uh, the Facebook page as well. So I will read them out and, and answer them or I'll read out any uh, comments that you have so that people can hear them. Yeah, I can see Future is connecting via Facebook and Cabo. So if you've got any comments uh, or any questions, anything you want to share, you can type it there, then I will read it uh, to the rest of the community here in the Zoom call. So over, back to you. So our tie your hand is up so you can start. Uh, good morning, everyone. Morning. Is that was, yeah. yeah. So I, I wanted to know the, the, I wanted to know the relationship in between the, the skin type and the, uh, Sunscreen SPF numbers. As I guess, you know, when I choose the SPF number, what exactly do I look at? And what do those numbers getting symbolizes? Like SPF 5, 10, up to, I don't know, up to where, <laughs> up to what. I just wanted to know what exactly what, when I choose an SPF, I mean, sunscreen with a certain SPF number, what really do I have to consider? I'm not sure whether my, am I might be on that, but 
just wanted to know the relationship in between the, the SPF and uh, the sun, I mean the skin. Can Kalalo, please, can you touch on that? I, I don't know much about the young ones. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's what I. That, Hello, yeah. are you there? Yes, I'm there, coach. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, can you can you touch on that? Um. Hello, Atta. I'm going to change this. Um. In terms of uh, the, the, there is no um. A, a specific SPF for generally. Um, the, the, the sunscreen, it's, it's, it's for all skin types. Um, however, you know, sometimes um, the, the skin could, 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 be, could, be, could be sensitive. So really, um, it's a matter of um, just getting to, 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 to know what works for you. Because normally, if you have sensitive screen, I mean, sensitive skin, there would be um, uh, products for a particular range of products that you use and uh, there would be a, a sunscreen also in, in, in that range but otherwise um usually um it's 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 it's, it's for all skin types and um in terms of spf um spf stands for sun protection factor and um it's something to do with um the, the, the extent of exposure. And this is something also that um, maybe I should emphasize. Um, usually most of the sunscreens, uh, when it, uh, you, 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 you apply or use them and uh, you get exposed, you are exposed say to UV radiation, especially maybe the sun, uh, too much exposure, you realize that even if maybe you are wearing a sunscreen, you still, the UV rays will still penetrate. And um, it's something to do with, um, you know, the, 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 the multiplication factor, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the sunscreen with the lower sunscreen has a lower level of protection. And it means you need to be applying, reapplying more and more. Whereas if you are using a, a sunscreen with a higher sun protection factor, you don't have to reapply as, as, as many times as uh, maybe for a, a sunscreen that has a factor number, number five. So if it's SPF 50, it means it has um, 10 times more protection compared to the one that has um, SPF, um, SPF 5. Wow. But then also again in the market, you find that there could be some sunscreens again um, whereby they will say, you, if you're using this one, you just need to, to apply once in a day. You don't have to reapply during the day because there would be a particular ingredient within there that is effective at uh, filtering the UV rays for, for a complete day. And then the other thing, um, you know, all of us, whether you are dark color or light toned, we get affected by, um, by UV rays. And um, like I usually give an example of, um, you know, like if you go and uh, get exposed to the sun, says you are wearing white and the other person is wearing black, you would find that, um, you feel the, the one who feels the heat quicker is the one who is wearing black. So what is the message? The message is that you could be saying, I'm dark toned, so therefore I don't need a sunscreen. All of us need it. And if you are dark toned, you even need it more. It's only that for the light tones, it, uh, people, it shows easily. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, folks, for, for sharing that I was looking at. I was looking at my sunscreen and hoping I will, I will see it. Yeah, so, so I, think, I think one of the things that I wanted to touch there that uh, Coach uh, Khalilo didn't maybe mention is that there is normally a different sunscreen for the body and for the face. So, so it's that, that is where it's very, very important uh, because uh, there are people who react to some of the chemicals in the sunscreen. So normally, if you are reacting to that sunscreen, you want a, a it's, it's called a, para, a paraben-free sunscreen. Mm -hmm. It's normally the one that dermatologists recommend uh, for the face, especially if you have a sensitive skin. So you want to really look, look into that. So be careful. Don't just take any 
in sunscreen and, uh, and put it on your face. Look at, is it a facial sunscreen or the other one is it for the body? So those are some of the things that you really want to, you want to look at when you are using it. And uh, normally, uh, they recommend a higher SPF for us here in Botswana because it's, it's, really, it's really very, very hot. But uh, it, it, it doesn't depend more on how high it is, but on the layer. So that's why they keep on saying, uh, if you, like if you are getting into water, you need to apply more. If you are getting into the sun, you need to apply it frequently. So the frequency is also important. It's not just about the layer because it's not permanent. So you can't apply it in the morning and then spend the whole day uh, in the sun and thinking you are still getting the protection. So somewhere there you need to, uh, to continue uh, repeating it. All right, uh, any questions? I haven't, let me see if I haven't been following there on Facebook. Uh, yeah, okay, okay, uh, uh, Khalil, there's a question that's saying, I don't know if this is true, but can you please clarify, does the level of SPF in any way have relationship with age? Like the more you age, the more SPF level you need. Uh, Doreen, can you mute yourself, please? Thank you. Um, I'll have to find out. But um, like I said, uh, let's remember that, um, you know, um, sun damage occurs in our youth, the majority of it, at a much earlier age. It's only that we see the results or the effect of it at a much later stage, like in our 30s and 40s. And, um, you know, sun damage usually also shows uh, through, um, you know, pigmentation, uh, whereby we end up having maybe two toes in our skin. And it can be quite um, uh, stubborn to, to, to deal with. Because remember, if you, if, you are, if you, it's only showing in our 30s or 40s, it's been affecting you for, for, for so many years. And even maybe when you get to your 40s, you are not even doing anything about it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. There are other questions that you should be monitor. Can you read the question, Uncle? I, I don't think I can, I, I don't see it. I, I saw uh, it's from Future. They are asking the same question. Okay, How I, 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 my okay I, I saw that one. I said, we, well, I think we will we'll wrap with it because we talked about it uh, yesterday and she talked about it today. So we'll just summarize that. Uh, she actually talked about that during the call uh, that you can test. But uh, I think there, there, there are different levels where you can start. You can start just with uh, a checklist like she was mentioning uh, and then get into... Uh, you know, a process of doing it at a lower level and then uh, get into a machine that actually, you know, uh, scans your entire, your entire face. Like, this is very interesting. So, 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 Kalelo does that. So, if you want to do a skin test uh, analysis, you can contact uh, Kalelo. Uh, then after this lockdown, she will uh, make sure that uh, she gets that done for you. But it's so interesting uh, we can, you can use a checklist, but it gives you an overview. It's good because you have a starting point. But if you really want to know what's happening, you do a skin analysis. And it depends on, on what type of skin analysis you make. Like uh, the one that I did, uh, I did it from uh, a dermatologist because like I mentioned, I've been taking care of my skin for a very long time. And I had to put my whole head into like a, an, a, a scanner, like an electromagnetic scanner. And uh, they analyze my entire skin. And you could, you could see a lot of scary things when you analyze your skin. You know, you will see those uh, fine line wrinkles. You know, when you look at yourself, you are thinking, no, I'm good. But when you get into the analysis, it will really show you where your skin is damaged. It will really tell you whether you need to repair parts of your skin and recommend how you can repair that. So basically going through a skin analysis will help you get a recommendation of what you need to do to your skin and the type of products that you can use, whether you are repairing, whether you need to protect more, but it will guide on what you actually need to do at, uh, at, at, at a particular time. 
So it, 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 you can do it. The, the dermatologist is slightly, uh, because it's slightly expensive. Uh, if you are doing it through uh, medical aid, you can do it, but you can do it from a beauty, uh, a beauty spy, beauty life coach, and still get the same thing. Because that's what, what happens. My dermatologist would do that, and then she will uh, prescribe our products and even sell some of those products to me. Okay, so uh, Umkuli is saying it's frozen. Umkuli is your network. I'm not frozen. This side. Uh, I'm, I'm really at it. It shows me if I get frozen, I, I, I see before you get it there. <laughs> so I see what. Some... Okay, from the Facebook. I was talking from the Facebook, but here on the Zoom, you are fine. No, even on the Facebook. I'm both on Facebook and Zoom. Okay. So normally it shows me first if it's cutting from Facebook. So that's why I normally pause. Before, before you tell me that some that is off, I, I see it here on my dashboard. That is not going through. So if if it's not if it's freezing on your side this time around, it's, it's might it's, it's likely to be your internet and not mine, because mine is still uh is still intact. Okay. Any more questions? Any more comments? Has the sun has a okay okay? okay. Has any say my skin is oil is oily? I tried all things. I'm trying all things. I'm failing. Yeah. So I think at this point, uh, has nani you has nani you, you had had sun sorry for not uh, spelling your name properly. Uh, you need to do a skin uh, care analysis and uh, get a proper recommendation of products that you could that you could use. Uh, because trying, like like uh, Kalelo mentioned, trying many different products. Uh, may actually, you know, uh, damage your skin rather than even uh, make it better. So you want to use the right uh, product. So get help and, uh, and get a prescription on that. And then just to chip in there, Coach, uh, maybe, you know, your skin can be tricky. You know, your skin can be oily and sensitive at the same time, you know. So what are we really dealing with? And um, I usually say to people, if you've gone from one brand to another, maybe it's the time to, 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 to pause and, uh, and seek help. Because like uh, Coach said, you know, maybe the starting point will be, how is my, my gut health? Is that maybe one of the factors that is influencing what I see or, or on my skin? Because um, like she said when she was to, to, um, uh, teaching us about, um, uh, about gut health, you know, beauty is an inside job. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's an inside out job. It's, not, it's never an outside in job. So you cannot influence the inside by doing something outside. But you can always influence the outside by, by what you are doing inside. That's why I'm saying it's an inside out job and not the other way around. So you want to really look at, uh, uh, look at your, your, your health uh, you know, uh, in a broad perspective. Are you eating well? Are you exercising? And, and exercise is one of those things that if you do it regularly, you will start seeing the results on your skin very quickly. It, 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 you will really notice that your, your skin has actually changed much quicker than if you are trying to apply things on your skin. So that is really the go-to point. Uh, Doreen, your hand was up. Can you unmute yourself and, 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 and share? And Tembi has also written another chat box that she has a question. Okay, I'll go to the chat box. Yes, uh, Doreen? Good morning, Game Changers. Um, I really appreciate, appreciate the presentation. I am learning a lot. Like, um, I, I'm one of those people that have been thinking of doing things right. Cleansing and um, toning and also using um, moisturizer. Although uh, with toning, uh, I'm not very religious. I do it not all the time, sometimes. So um, I think from now I will correct it properly. Actually, I started yesterday. After yesterday's presentation, I went back and did the right thing. I cleansed my face, 
and um, exfoliated, uh, put some oil, applied some oil, and then protected my skin. All these things will be there, but I'll go to use them um, like religiously. <clears throat> now, my 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 other uh, concerns have been answered. Like um, being a dermat, I thought um, um, one needed to see a dermatologist for them to get um, a skin analysis, proper skin analysis. But parallel with doing it, um, number one in the market at my age. I should be uh, at the top of the list. Then um, sunblock also partly it has been covered. But uh, I just wanted to, to ask um, yeah, concerning sunblock or sunscreen. There are some sunblock that um, also can be applied. I don't know if it's the same thing for before swimming. Before swimming, there are those that you, you apply so that you put protect yourself against your skin against the chemicals in the water as well as the, the sun as you get out. And then in winter also, we are encouraged to apply sunblock. Now I used to think in winter, uh, mostly like, I don't need sunblock. So I, I wish um, Carl could touch on that, the importance of using sunblock in winter. And then finally, <clears throat> doing or, or using products that are meant for the food. This is what I think and um, I'm very happy that I picked it. But uh, I must confess, <laughs> when I do my, 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 my facials or when I bath, I, I, I do everything in the main bathtub. I, I bath my, my, my legs in the bathtub and my face as well. And then in the bathtub, you use, sometimes you put salt, you put foam, and you put um, water toilet and on all these, and you'll be using them on the face. This one to find out from it is okay to use the um, water main bathtub with all these things, or they also damage the, the facial skin. Thank you for now. Over to you, Karen. Okay, um, as much as um, winter, um, it's not that sunny, but there is still UV radiation, right? And uh, remember, it's not just about UV radiation, it doesn't just come from the sun. With modernization, um, we have a lot of gadgets in our households that are emitting UV rays. Although, um, you know, technology is also trying to catch up with, with ways to try to, to reduce the emissions, but it is inevitable. Right now, we are in front of our gadgets. Our skin is consuming it. You know, the lighting, our televisions, and, and, and so forth. And uh, that is why yesterday I said, uh, you know, apply your, your sunscreen, whether it's winter, whether it's raining, mm -hmm. whether it's cloudy, and every day. That is why I said it is the basic, one of the protection of your skin is one of the basic steps. And then um, regarding the bathing, well, you raised a good point, um, uh, Doreen. You know, treat uh, your facial skin differently. Um, we all started doing things in, in, in ways that are not right. You know, but um, if you start, um, if you just go into the tub and um, take that very water with the foam bath, with the detol, you know, you, you, you are basically applying those things that you are not supposed to apply to your face. So, uh, as for me, normally what I do, I would, even if I use, I'm using a tub or um, uh, a shower, I start off with my face. And when I'm done in, with my face, that's when now I go into the shower or I go into, into the tub. To the extent that you, you should have a, a face cloth, you know, specific for, for, for the face. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much for, for sharing on that.
my daughter is very high on that. I was very loose on it, and she kept on saying, no, mama. She has, she, just like we are saying, she uses two different uh, face cloth, one for the face, one for the body, and uh, she doesn't wash her face in the bathtub. Wow. Bath is in the bath, and then from there she goes to the hand basin, and she washes it thoroughly and sanitizes it. I mean, before Corona. So we you know, would wash and sanitize uh, the bathtub and then wash her face. So when she's around, it's always on my face. No, mama, you can't, you can't do that, mama. You can't do that. Uh, if you are even applying you know, a cleanser with a, with a cotton, that's too rough. You can't be that rough. And she's very particular. She said, you can't, from, from bathing, you don't need to wait a long time after bathing and applying, uh, you know, moisturizer on your face. It doesn't, doesn't need to dry. So immediately, that's the first thing that you need to be doing so that uh, you, you don't get your face dry. So it's very, very important to, to treat your, your face uh, differently uh, from your body. And uh, that is true. Most of the things that are applied in our, when we bath, you know, the, the bath foams, uh, all of those, which are very strong and rough for the face. And I think there was a, there was a question. I don't think there was another question. Okay, no, I think, I think what you are saying, I totally agree with an inside job, out job, I can testify on that. Yeah, but is one of our, is a graduate of our Ignite Your Spark program. And uh, I think one day I'll bring her in here because she's one of our, my, my, my inspiration uh, because uh, she doesn't allow anything to actually stop her, not even age. So, okay, let's, let's go to Tembi in the Zoom call. Tembi or Ten, you had a question. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, Game Changers. Uh, my question is, um, when you spoke about uh, the gut health, you spoke about um, fermented foods. And I just wanted to find out whether Madila is um, appropriate for, for gut health. That's the first question. The second question, it's uh, on the skin, uh, on the skin care that um, if um, uh, the damage is done um, in your youth, uh, when you are now old, what are your chances, uh, and you already have wrinkles, what are your chances <laughs> of um, having your skin um, improving from using the, the, the skin care program? Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let, 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 let me answer the Madila one. Uh, the Madila one is very tricky because Madila is fermented, but there are so many different ways of fermenting it. You know, there are just so many different ways and uh, people are adding things into it. So unless you are the one who is actually uh, doing it so that you are balanced, because the important thing is to get a good balance of the good bacteria, you know, over the harmful bacteria. But if it's not, uh, you know, produced properly, it may harbor the harmful bacteria at the same time. So it is quite, it's quite, it's quite a tricky one. If you are using Madea that is, uh, uh, I think, professionally produced, that way they look at the, the, the microbes that are inside. So like, if I talk about natural yogurt, it is where there is a delicate balance of that in natural yogurt. So uh, with Madea, I would say go on it, unless you are buying professionally produced Madea that has been you know, uh, measured, you know, you know how much uh, is in there. And I'm saying this because some people can even react because of my Madila based on how that Madila has been done. And I'm a typical example of that. I'm not allergic to Madila, but I nearly died in 2016. You know, uh, my, 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 my uncle's wife passed away. So I went to Mahalape with, the, with my cousins. And uh, when we got there, my uncle just bought a lot of Madila very nice Madila from the, you know, from, from the, the open market. And uh, since I love Madila, I went there and I cooked. I cooked a uh, soft porridge, ate, I cooked that. Uh, and, uh, and within like, uh, after three hours, I started reacting. I took it lightly. So we went back the following day, we were driving. So I was just literally sick in the car, just sleeping until a point where I stopped and I, I, I vomited. I thought it was over. And I went home, then it started, 
I, I went to Bukamu, so I didn't get help. I came back. And when I woke up, I was so sick that I had to get my niece who was just learning how to drive. To drive me to, I, I stayed like five houses from Hilamolite Clinic, but I couldn't even walk to drive myself there. So I had to wake her up and say, you're going to drive me. She was scared. So I sat at the back and I was changing the gears as she drove so that she could drive into the clinic. So really, that is how much it can get worse in these homemade uh, madillas where the, the, there is an imbalance of the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. Okay, I think, Kalel, you can answer that other one about uh, when the wrinkles are already there. You take care of the ring. <laughs> yeah, um, like I said, uh, uh, Tembi, um, there is a starting point. It's never late to say, um, I cannot do it. And uh, if you start it at an older age, um, remember you are still alive. So uh, um, whatever you do, it will prevent you know further damage. Um, and then um, even um, reverse some of the effects that are already there to, to, to some degree. And um, remember, um, you, 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 you can establish your own routine of what to do at home. But besides that, um, at least once a month, go out and you know, pamper yourself and book a, a full facial and um, you know, to, 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 to enhance um, how your, your, your skin looks. And um, like I said, uh, there are anti-aging products um, for, for the face, for that addresses the lines and the wrinkles, and also um, to take care of the neck and then the area around the eyes, because the area around the eyes is also one area that keeps us away, really. One those lines and wrinkles um, around here, and uh, you know the puffiness as well, and dark circles. So. And th th there's a whole lot of um, other treatments there, like you can end up doing uh, laser treatments and, uh, and derma pills, you know, to enhance your skin. And then maybe, um, you know, there's quite a whole lot of things, uh, taking collagen drinks, you know, to, to boost the, 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 the collagen in your system. Because one of the things that we lose as we age is the functionality of the skin is the ability of the skin to, um, um, to produce um, those building metrics like collagen and uh, elastin, which are the building blocks um, in, in our skin. And um, also the, 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 the fat cells also tend to collapse. That is why our skin becomes uh, drier as we age. All right, uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to, I think uh, it's good that you talked about the area under the eye uh, because uh, whenever we use products, uh, we, we always, it's always written, uh, you know, avoid the eye area, avoid the eye area. So the question is, what, what is, what's going to happen if you keep on avoiding that eye area? And for some people, especially if you are lighter in complexion, you'll start seeing, getting wrinkles, you know, uh, that. Or you start seeing inflammation. If you don't sleep uh, properly, you don't get rest. Uh, one of the areas that will complain in the face is your under eye. So it will become very dark. Or you will get a lot of wrinkles out there. But uh, in the market, there are products that are meant to be used just on the under eye. Like that. Uh, I do have one that I use. So it's, uh, I put it, before I put any oily layer, I apply it. And there's also... Uh, a skill of how to apply it. We actually use this finger. <laughs> I think it's yes. Yes. yeah, yeah, because 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 it is very very sensitive. Yeah, mm. very sensitive. Uh, this area, so you wouldn't want to exert a lot of force under it as well. So there is a finger that you use when you are applying that. So if you are already seeing uh, wrinkles or you are you have uh, uh, that leggy under eyes and you know you may consider uh, looking for a product that would work for you. At times, like, yeah, there are so many things out there. <laughs> yeah, and like, like Coach is saying, um, I, I learned that about the finger thing. There's actually a test 
that you can do. You know, these fingers, they are the weakest in terms of pressure of all your fingers. And um, the, the, the skin around the eyes is the thinnest in your body. So the skin around the eyes is the thinnest and these two fingers are the, are the weakest in terms of pressure. So they're the best fingers to use for anything that you apply around the eyes. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's a beauty tip. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for, for me, I'm not really an expert, but because I've been practicing this and uh, uh, I've, I've been reading a lot around it, and uh, and then also because I empowered my daughter at an early age, now she, she, she's also my coach when it comes to uh, facial things. So she keeps me, you know, she keeps me on tab whenever I try and, and, and get lazy or, or, or want to skimp things. She said, no, 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 that's not <laughs> doing it, you know. <laughs> So, so yeah, and I think one of the things that I, that I can just uh, share is that this requires uh, consistency, you know. You know, everything, like I talked about consistency in the group when it comes to exercising. For you to get the results in anything that you do, it requires consistency. Consistency compounds. So you, do, you can't afford to just do it three days and then you stop for two weeks and then when you feel like uh, the, third, the fourth week, you do it for two other days, you are not going to see the result. Because it's a process. It has to be happening continuously. And that is why it's called a routine. It means you need to do it consistently. As much as it is it's hard, you can skip a day, uh, but pull yourself back if you realize that you are not following uh, the routine consistently, because otherwise you are not going to get uh, results. So... Yeah, Tim, yeah, Poppy say I might be doing something that I, ca I can't even see a wrinkle on my face. Amazing. Yes, I think even even it depends on, on a lot of exposure, like like uh like Khalil was saying, we get a lot of it when we were young and uh you know the, the the effect only shows up at a later time in our lives, which is why when you tell people that uh exercise or eat properly and then they say no, but I'm still okay, uh it compounds as well, you know. Everything compounds, it either compounds negatively or it compounds positively. So by the time that it starts showing, that is when now that uh, compilation would have taken place. So, okay, Bobby is saying I didn't get which fingers. Uh, there she... are some questions that we do in Gomorrah. Uh, Okay, Luda is saying my question is from the gut. I eat foods daily. Can I get the heart burn? Uh, you know, heart burn is it, 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 not, it, not everyone gets a heart burn. It depends how uh, infl implemented are you already. Are you sensitive to certain types of foods? We talked about food tolerance uh, the day, uh, two days back. So you want to really uh, become aware of uh, which food are you intolerant to and then uh, minimize or remove them from your diet. So something may give you a heart burn, but it won't give me a heart burn. You know, when it comes to health, there's, there's no a size, one size fits all because our bodies respond are differently. And also it depends on how much have we, uh, I think how much have we exposed our, our bodies, you know, to, to harsh things already. So you may become sensitive because of that. So you need to become very mindful and notice what's going on in your body, what is it that you eat that uh, triggers heart bends and then eliminate it. But I can't just say if you are eating fruits, you are going to have heart bends. It depends on what type of fruits and whether you are sensitive to that or not. Uh, that This one I'll take back to Khalil. She's saying, uh, I think the, the, the words, what's in the face. So I, I'll give that to, to Khalil. And, uh, um. And then for P saying which fingers, so you can cover that finger one. And uh, is there anything on the No, there's the one yeah. finger from school. So it's the same with Poppy. Okay. Okay, and then and then Kwaketso was saying that I normally have an issue. I get rushed if I do long hair stuff that touch my hair. Yeah, the you know the, the chemicals from the hair. We talked about chemicals from the hair affecting the face. I gave an example of how I, I did an S scale in 2017 and I ended up with two colors. So my skin reacted. I, the, the S scale was on the head, 
but not on my face, but it affected my face so that I ended up having a, a skin pigmentation uh, because of that. So there's just so much that really goes on that affects our skins. Okay, uh, back to you, Kalle. Okay. And then also, I realized also that, um, you know, skin can actually be affected by you know, your, your, your hair as well. You know, because sometimes you, uh, you'd be having a hairstyle and you spend so long time without washing your hair. And you only wash it when you see that it, it is visibly dirty. But then you start seeing breakouts, especially around, um, around the forehead. And um, the one here, Dikakana, um, Dikakana, the only solution is, is surgical, is to remove them surgically. So I, I know people out there, dermatologists um, do it, and um, they can do a good job for you. So the best thing is just to, to book uh, with the dermatologist and, 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 and do it. And then the fingers, um, it's the ring finger on, on, on the left, right? And then mm. the, the same one on the right. Mm. And Tembi was saying that it is clumsy. Yes, when you start off doing it, it is clumsy. Just like any other thing, but once you are aware, you start practicing it and embrace the journey. I've been doing it for many years, and I never make mistakes because it's it's a part of me now. You know, I'm conditioned. You know, we talk about conditioning. I'm conditioned, and um, I see a question from from Doreen here on uh, in the Zoom chat. She says. Um, what is the importance of doing this routine morning and evening if you did a good job in the morning? Yeah, that's a question and a half. <laughs> but remember, during the day, my question is, um, during the day you get so exposed, right? Sweat, you know, whether you see the sweat visibly or not, but your skin is breathing in and out. So, and uh, you get also to the environment right so whether you can visibly see you are dirty or not you know something is on your skin so that is why most of the time even the same goes for even bathing from head to toe we do it in the evening i know it can be difficult sometimes to bath in the evening but remember for, for, for the face it's unlike the body you probably use the same um, cream in the morning and in the evening for the rest of your body. There are specific products um, for, for, for the evening for facial skincare, especially the, the moisturizers and, and other products that nurture your skin. And um, these products are formulated in such a way that, you know, when you, you go to sleep, your, your, your body rests and uh, your body is not busy. These products are formulated in such a way that uh, they, 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 they nourish your skin while you are sleeping. Oh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. And, 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 and I would say the, the night part is actually more important than the morning part. Why? Because when we sleep, the whole body rests and uh, it goes into a repair process. That is, mm -hmm. you don't get enough sleep. You are going to see a lot of things not working properly in your body because you, you, your body is not able to go into that repair state. And one of the things that gets repaired uh, when you sleep is, 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 your, is your face. So which is why, uh, like Khalil was saying, some people don't bath twice. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm that culprit. I'm not consistent when it comes to bathing twice. I've been, ever since I was even at, at university high school, I, I do it once in a while, but I'm not regular. But I'll always wash my face when I go to sleep. I try to laugh. <laughs> but my face, I will always wash my face even if I've not washed my body. So that is really how important I know I know that the, the skin needs to, 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 to repair. It needs to get rest and repair. And when you remove all the excess, uh, you know, the dirt and everything, you are preparing it for that repair process to actually, to actually take place. You are removing all the toxins from the skin. So that it actually detoxifies, you know, uh, during the night, it removes those uh, excess toxins. So now then you will see why you need to wash in the morning because some of the toxins have been released on your skin when you are sleeping at night. So in the morning, 
you need to wash and remove those toxins. Otherwise, you're going to continue with them uh, and are going to kind of reinfect your skin. Yeah, I think if there are any questions, we'll take a few more questions because we are now uh, at the top of the hour. We are, I think it's six past uh, 10. So we've been going on for, for almost an hour now. So if there are no other questions, I will, I will uh, conclude the call so that we go and do other things. This is meant to set up our day, but it is not meant to, to, to take a lot of our time and kind of, uh, and kind of disrupt our other uh, programs. So this is what I, will, I, 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 I like to do so that we stick to that time. Like in, in the mornings, I want to do it between uh, 30 minutes and on Saturday, we can do it for an hour. So if there are no other questions, we will then call it a day and we will connect. Abo just said she will be seeking for the skin analysis immediately after Corona. Yes, That's from she's seeking that. Even Popi, Popi was saying she wants a Khalilos number, so we will provide the number. We also provide uh, the uh, Khalilos Facebook uh, group where she shares tips on, uh, on, 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 on skin care and, uh, and life in general because she is a beauty life coach. So she looks at your skin, she, but she also looks at your overall health, how the two uh, comes in together. So you will definitely get those calls when uh, Corona gives us uh, a go ahead to, to start living again. Otherwise, thank you so much uh, for, for joining in. Uh, all of you, those who joined via the live stream and those who joined uh, via Zoom, thank you for the engagement and the participation, we look forward to engaging with you in the Facebook group. And I thank you, Atta. I know it's always Atta and Pamba, and I thank you for representing the male species, you know, <laughs> for representing the male species. Uh, I know it's not easy for our male counterparts to engage on this, but your commitment is, uh, is, really, is really humbling. So thank you very much uh, for that. <laughs> and and I think Kalelo, uh, I will invite you maybe uh, two weeks from now to talk about uh, skin care, you know, facial skin care for men. Because I don't know who told men that they don't need to take care of their skins. Because I think they confuse makeup and uh, and just normal skin care, but there's a difference. Actually, makeup is not a skin care; it's just for aesthetic purposes, honestly. It is, and, and because some makeup even causes more damage on the skin uh, than that. So I will bring her on to talk about uh, the effect of makeup on, our, on the health of our skin. And maybe briefly talk about, uh, you know, skin care for men. What, what do they need to do? Because uh, I think somehow they've gotten it wrong, especially our African men here. We said, let's go for a massage. No, they think massage is for women, but massage is for everybody. So... <laughs> You know, so so health 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 is, is universal. We both need uh, to take proper care of our ourselves, both men and uh, and women. So I will bring uh, you back uh, later on to come and talk about that, so that they can appreciate why they need to take care of their skin. It's not it's not a girl thing, you know. I think it's, it's a human the human need to take care of our skin. All right, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it was a pleasure to. Share with you today. And oh, Luda is saying, please celebrate with me. It's my birthday today. So Luda is turning 56 today. So can we sing a happy birthday song for her? Do we have a singer here in the house? Can you unmute yourself if you are in Zoom? And uh, let's sing happy birthday for, for Luda. I'm not a good singer, but I'm very good at joining when others have started. So can someone start? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy No, it's mine. This one's I am. Let's see you on the screen. 
Let's no, see her no, on the screen. Luda is not is connected by Facebook. The live oh. Yeah, so we, we don't have a on Zoom. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy your, your lock-in birthday, Luda. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining Bye. in. Bye.